they ain't believe me. These niggas die to me. Look what I'm becoming. That I did it, made a man of me. All the that I did, I swear my What did you do, YouTube? It's Ty Fetty with the Fetty. Back at y'all another video, man. Y'all know why we here. To handle business. But before we handle that business, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to say it again. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to say it one more. Matter of fact, like, comment, subscribe. Before I got beat you up, y'all know what's going on, man. Look, man, my GD just passed. I appreciate all y'all that wish me a happy birthday, you feel me? I got your DMs. I seen it on my on the community post. I appreciate y'all. I just know it's a, we celebrate another year of life. Another year, Ty Fatty. We're going to keep going. We're always going we gonna to go to the top. we always going to keep that pressure on them. We ain't going to let up, man. Y'all know I had a good birthday, though, man. I got spent time with the people I care about. People I care about spend time with me. That's all I got to ask for, bro. The older I get, the more birthdays feel like just a regular day for real, bro. You know, I ain't do nothing extravagant. Kind of past that point in my life, but I celebrated. You know, I had me some Casamigos. You know, I smoked me some good. You hear me? Got some good Doja up in me. That's about it, though. I cooled it. Y'all yeah, seen my fit. Oh, Mary on Mary on Mary on me. <laughs> but nah, I appreciate everybody that wished me happy birthday, man. Look, Instagram will be right here. Y'all going to see it. Y'all see the new post, birthday post. Go tap that like button for me. Spam the comments. Fetty Gang, Fetty Mafia, whatever you want to call us. Fetty Family, whatever. We a family. We the gang. We everything. Fetty to the top, man. Follow me on the ground. Send me DMs, video requests, all that, bro. Y'all know I get back to y'all. Let's get it, man. We got little baby crazy brother, Lil Steve. They I know they ain't blood brothers, but if y'all don't know, Lil Steve also go by G5. They call him G5. And if you ever hear Lil Baby say free G5, Lil Steve, he just, this is what we talking about. Man, let's tap in, man. Shout out Hip Hop Daily. Lil Baby is one of the hottest artists in the game. But before we hop in sure. the booth, he was really active in the streets of Atlanta. A lot of his homies still got both feet in the trenches. Today, we're breaking down the wild story of his brother, Lil Steve, aka G5, who went from breaking into over 100 cars to fighting the crazy murder case. Let's get right to it. Lil Baby's one of the biggest rappers in the game right now, but his brother Lil Steve was actually famous before him. Baby blew up back in 2017 after his mixtape Perfect Timing dropped, but Steve was making headlines three years before that in 2014. In June 2014, Lil Steve got out of jail and was given 20 to 30 years of probation. Releasing him turned out to be a bad idea for the Atlanta police, though. I'm going to be honest, bro. A lot of people, like, I know for a fact, a lot of people would rather go ahead and take that time on the chain than to get 20 years of probation, 10 years of probation, bro. Because when you're on probation and you out, bro, you can't slip up, bro. You can't do nothing. And even if you do, something does happen without your, your, your recognizance or just some accident don't happen, bro. Man, the system don't care about that, bro. You're going to go do the rest of your backup times. A lot of people would rather take them extra 10 years in that hole than to have to be on a probation, bro. Because like like uh, like uh, Meek said, bro, being on probation, bro, it's like, bro, you a child again, bro. Like, you on a, a, a real short leash. And a lot of people's temptation don't ever let them be great. Now, a lot of people do. Do they probation? Do they, do they you know, get with they P.O. Every, every month, every week, whenever you got to check in? And they be straight. But a lot of people just can't shake that, bro, and I, I get it. Cause Steve pretty much started a crime wave all by himself. A month after he got out, Steve made headlines, breaking into over 100 cars and hotel parking lots. When the news broke, he already had 24 warrants out. Damn. But the cops accused him of breaking into 118 whip. <laughs> According to them, Steve was running around breaking into cars, stealing GPS devices, phones, and laptops. But the biggest thing he was snatching was guns, which made the cops and everyone else even more nervous. People in the neighborhood was worried about getting robbed, and the cops told them to stop leaving anything valuable in their whips because they couldn't catch Lil Steve. I'm going to be real, y'all. I mean, where I grew up, where I'm from, we already know. Man, look, when you park your car, bro, don't leave nothing in it. Leave your doors unlocked, bro. I ain't going to lie. Like, it's that simple, bro. Like, don't leave nothing in it and leave your doors unlocked, bro. You know why? You leave the doors unlocked so that they don't got to break the window, bro. If you know, bro, getting your window fixed the biggest hassle, especially if you got tents. You got to get the window fixed and get some more tents on that joint. They going to open the door, see it's open, and not have to break no window. And, you know, you leave nothing in there, obvious reasons, bro. Ain't not, they can't get nothing. Ain't nothing going to – they going to open your door, go through your car, don't find nothing, close the door, leave you alone. Now, you can have nothing in your car, but if your door's locked, they still going to break that window. So now they broke the window for nothing. It's still a hassle to you, bro. 
Leave your cars unlocked and leave nothing in your car, I'm telling you. They have surveillance photos of him robbing cars at the Motel 6. But a local news station interviewed Steve's grandma. She told him he might have done something, but no, not that many. Breaking into over 100 cars in under a month is wild. But in 2018, Steve got caught up in an even crazier case. By 2018, Lil Baby was already one of the hottest new rappers in the game. His debut album dropped in May and hit number three on the Billboard 200. Was one of them in ones. October, he released a collab tape with Gunna and earned a Grammy nomination for the track Drip Harder. But while he was popping off in the industry, his little brother was getting wrapped up in murder cases. On November 30th, 2018, the police found two men who got robbed and shot at a Waffle House parking lot in Brookhaven. Nobody knew it went down, but one of the dudes was pronounced dead at the scene while the other was taken to the hospital for treatment. A few days later, cops arrested a dude named Pierre Gregory Singletary for the shooting. It looked like a simple case at first, but come to find out, Singletary was actually the victim. On December 11th, the cops booked Steve and a dude named Quintez Griffin on felony murder, aggravated assault, armed robbery, mm. and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. It turns out, the shooting ain't even go down at the Waffle House. Roderick Francois survived the shooting, and he told the cops it happened at an apartment complex down the road where Pierre Singletary lived. Francois said he went to Pierre's place with his homie Carthel Johnson to buy weed. While they was there, two dudes rushed in and tried to rob him. That's when the shots started going off, and Francois and Johnson both got hit. Francois carried his homie to the whip and drove to the Waffle House for help. But unfortunately, Johnson was already dead by the time police got there. Lil Steve and his homie Griffin were charged for killing Johnson. What's wild about the situation is that just a few months earlier, Lil Baby posted a pic with Steve on Facebook and captioned it with, G5 out the can, give him a hundred bands. Even if Baby didn't really hand over a hundred racks, he was already big enough to take care of his bro Steve without having to crash out over little weed deals. But you never know what's really going on behind the scenes. And obviously, the cops thought they had enough evidence to take him down over the robbery and killing. Steve and Griffin sat in jail while they waited for the trial to start. But the situation with the state's case against them was a hot mess. There was a lot of issues getting a trial date that both sides could agree on. And at one point, the state basically wanted to let Steve and Griffin go until they can get more evidence to convict them. But the judge wasn't rocking with the idea. By that point, they had been sitting in jail for over a year. The trial was finally set to begin on January 7, 2020. But a few weeks before it was about to start, the prosecution tried to delay it again because they couldn't find the two witnesses they wanted to bring in to testify. The judge on the case aired out the prosecutors and said the state attempted to conceal its many failures by filing motions to delay the trial without evidence. She blocked their attempts to stop the trial and it started on January 7, 2020. This is where the case got even weirder. When the trial started, the prosecution wouldn't help pick the jury, declare their opening argument, or call any witnesses. Instead, they tried to convince the judge to dismiss the charges against Stephen Griffin so they could try him again at a different time, but the judge denied the motion. The defense picked the jury and everybody was ready to go, but the prosecution basically just refused to take part in the trial at all. So Stephen Griffin's lawyers asked the judge to acquit him on the charges since the state wouldn't prosecute, and the judge agreed to let him go. The judge said That's crazy. the state takes the position That's crazy. that defendants are dangerous to the community, but if so, it was the state which failed the community by failing to present any case at all for their conviction. Beating the murder charge was a huge win for Lil Steve. He celebrated with the first day out track where he rapped, caught you lacking, pulled up with that fucking semi, made it happen. 500 just to prove I ain't did it. And they was hating on us. Baby came and scooped me in a fucking Rolls truck. A Venador behind me with the fucking doors up. That's fire. The time didn't last long though. <laughs> and Steve was right. getting booked again in 2020. But somehow, he got released again by mistake. And Steve spent the next few months hiding out. When the cops finally tracked him down, they found him in the penthouse apartment with drugs, 20K in cash, and 11K in sneakers. Steve was curled up under the bed, but he came out and surrendered. He's back on the streets again. Now the situation's getting even messier. A few months ago, young thug's homie, Rue, accused Steve of snitching on him. Rue even posted paperwork that allegedly proved Steve flipped on him, and he claims that Steve changed his name to G5 to avoid being labeled as a rap. Steve hasn't commented on the situation, but lately, he ain't been seen with Lil Baby like he used to. Everyone knows that Thug and Lil Baby are tight, but Thug's homie calling this bro a snitch is pretty serious. Right now, Thug's too busy dealing with his own Rico trial to worry about Rue and Steve's issues, but Baby hasn't said anything about it either. Rumors say that Georgia might be going after 4 p.m. for Rico charges next. They ain't say so that. Baby <sighs> might just be trying to keep his distance from a dude who barely beat a murder charge. There's a lot going on with Atlanta right now. Nah, for Why real. Why and his crew are tied up in a Rico case and young Thug's trial is set to begin next month. Bruh, I ain't gonna lie. Atlanta on a straight BS, y'all. Straight BS. If rumors are true, Baby and 4PF might already be under investigation. 
Nobody knows how all this is going to play out. So tap in for updates while the stories develop. Lil Bay. Like I said, full, uh, not a hot. You know what I mean? Rico's, like, they passing on Rico's like they, uh, y'all been to Costco before and they give out the samples? That's why they throwing out them Rico's, bro. You get a Rico. You get a Rico. You get a Rico. Man, if you in Atlanta, man, stay, stay, stay smart, man. Nah, for real. But nah, I mean, you know, for the for them to walk on that murder charge off of the prosecution, not wanting to press charges yet, like that's crazy, bro. Because you know, once you beat a, beat a, them charges, you can never get retried for them charges. So basically, that's why the prosecution was basically trying to say, nah, let them go. We gonna charge them at a later date when we really got solid rock hard evidence. You know it don't work like that, bro. Now, granted, if the judge was a little on the dirty side, it would have definitely went like that. But that ain't how it's supposed to go. That's crazy that they beat them charges off the strength of the prosecution and won't prosecute them. Yet. Now they they good forever. I ain't know uh, G5 was home, though. That's crazy. And and I heard about the little the snitching allegations. and, and but, but from all the fake paperwork, bro, I, I don't know what to believe no more, y'all. I just... I just do my YouTube, man. Get y'all the videos y'all want and stay out the way, bro. Because I don't know what's going on out here, man. It's streets is finished. With that being said, man, it's Ty Fatty with the Fatty. Make sure y'all stay smart. Stay dangerous. And I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. I'm gone.